Another option when performing a swivel lock type procedure is to use the swivel lock as a base anchor and then use a tensioner in order to produce the required tension so that you are happy clinically with the stifle stability. The way we do this in this model which has been pre-prepared with the femoral socket and the tibial tunnel is to initially prepare the swivel lock implant is to place one end of the fiber tape strand through the eyelet of the swivel lock. The material is then placed and pulled until we have an equal distribution of length as far as the fiber tape is concerned. This swivel lock is now loaded and can be placed into the femoral socket. The application technique is as such. The initial travel direction of the implant is ascertained. Several taps with a mallet are performed to ensure the swivel lock implant contacts the bone model. By holding the square and turning the pair, the swivel lock implant is placed into the femoral socket until it reaches a level where the implant is completely inserted. At this stage, that can be assessed by unscrewing the green outer sheath to expose the position of the swivel lock implant in the femoral socket. This appears appropriate in this model. The swivel lock applicator is then disengaged and we have two strands of material, the two millimeter fiber tape and the fiber wire. These implant materials can then be placed across the lateral collateral ligament and through the tibial tunnel. To perform the tibial tunnel insertion of the implant, we use two eight inch nitinol loops. They are placed simultaneously through the tibial tunnel from the lateral to the medial aspect. Once that is performed, we isolate the two different implant materials. Both strands of the number two fiber wire will be placed through one of the nitinol loops. Both strands of the end of the two millimeter fiber tape will be placed through the other nitinol loop. The nitinol loops are then retracted through the tibial tunnel. First, the number two fiber wire and then the two millimeter fiber tape. It is important during this process that this material runs in a flat, and non-obstructed fashion. Some twisting of the material may occur and should not be stressed about. As you can see now, the implant is sitting on the lateral side from the femoral socket to the origin of the tibial tunnel. The model is then rotated where it will take a hemostat to hold the two-hole button. The fiber tape is inserted through the two-hole button like so. The fiber wire then follows. Making sure these strands are well organized and not obstructed is advisable. The two-hole button is then placed down to the bone surface. The two ends of the fiber tape are placed into the tensometer. The tensometer strands are strung through the central channel and through the device that keeps them in position. We like to leave a two to three centimeter length from the button surface. These strands are then wrapped up and over the stanchion and tensioned. The tensometer can be used to create the appropriate tension of the implant. In medium to large dogs, we use 10 pounds of force. This can be read on the sliding scale. Once the tensometer reaches that 10 pound level, it can be maintained. The implant can be inspected and if satisfied, one can, in the clinical case, move the limb through a range of motion to decrease the amount of creep or loosening in that implant prior to tying. In the bone model, is it advisable to decrease that tension down to five pounds of force to prevent contortion of the model? Once held in this position, it is possible to achieve temporary fixation by tying the fiber wire. As this is not a primary stabilizing implant, its sole use is to maintain the limb and stability position that you've produced. Reinspection of the implant and testing of the implant can be performed at this time. If one is satisfied, disengaging the fiber tape from the tensometer and then initial tying of the fiber tape is performed. Single throws and square knots are preferred. It is possible to retest by placing a bow on the initial throw and then testing to make sure that draw motion and instability has been resolved. This is more important in the clinical case than the model. If one is satisfied with position, the bow is released a second throw is placed, so a square knot is produced. This knot should be tight and throws should be cinched against each other. 
five to six throws are recommended to achieve a stable, secure knot. Once that has been achieved, re-examination of the implant site, determination of tension and stability can be repeated. It is not necessary to remove the fiber wire. Leaving it in position is likely to have little benefit or detraction. If it is left in position, several more throws can be placed to prevent knot loosening or implant disengagement. The fiber wire is then cut followed by the fiber tape. This knotted swivel lock technique allows you another option as far as placing an extra capsular suture across the joint to achieve cranial caudal and rotational stability.